asset by asset, page by page. Well, you can do that now in Go Live through site diagramming. I'm going to pull up a, a new site diagram here. And this is completely interactive with all the other elements of Go Live. So the index page that I was showing you simply drops into my site, into my concept. And if I want to create some pages, say for those menu items uh, on that page first, I simply do that here. It automatically links those pages directly to my index page. And these links are interactive. They'll be preserved when you publish this to your designers, to your developers. I'll show you that in, the, in a couple of seconds. Um, you can use a number of new objects we've created to, say, create annotations. So for instance, let's say I want this page to go off to a uh, shopping cart uh, database. Simply type that in. And uh, you have a number of other objects you can use. Say, here's, here's the database itself. I can connect this just by dragging and dropping it. I can also use, oh, let's say I want to put a PDF on this particular object. I can connect it this way, or I can use our lasso tool and connect it that way as well using this arc function. But I think the neatest thing of all is that when you're done with your overall idea of how you'd like this site to look, you can actually publish this through uh, staging, and it will show up, all those pages that I've created, right down at the bottom of your site ready for your designer, for your developer, to add content and get the site ready for staging and for publishing. So I think that's really exciting. One of the other things that I'd like to show you is uh, something that plagues everybody, because I know how much everybody loves to debug code here. Um, as you write a page, we've made it incredibly easy for you to take advantage of our check syntax function. So let me switch over to our outline mode. Here's all my tags behind that page. And simply by selecting check syntax, you can choose any number of pre-built standards, or you can add your own. I'm going to pick uh, HTML4 strict. And Go Live is going to go out and actually check the code for me against that, fire, find, all my e find all my errors, and tell me where they are so I can quickly address them and fix them and improve the efficiency and speed with which I get this uh, uh, website published. So that's really exciting. I mean, we're cleaning up the workflow, and we're making it more efficient for you to spend more time being creative and more time doing your job. And I think the most exciting thing is uh, something that um, uh, we've added for this upcoming version of Go Live. Real estate's always at a, a premium for creative professionals in terms of screen space. And we've had uh, t uh, pallets that you can tear off for some time, but now you can actually dock those pallets around the screen as flyouts. So you can customize your work area whatever way you like. Thank you. And folks, that's our next version of Go Live on OS 10. Brian. That's a little bit of our next version of Go Live on OS 10. <laughs> so Adobe InDesign 2.0, Adobe Illustrator uh, 10. We've got Acrobat Reader out there. We're showing you a glimpse of things to come here. Adobe is 110% committed to be what we are today, the leading network publishing application provider for the Macintosh platform. And I just want to reinforce that commitment moving forward, working hard on the rest of all the applications. Um, Steve talked about Microsoft and Word as a poster child for applications. And uh, they, may, they may be the poster child, but word processing is kind of child's play compared to what Adobe is bringing to the platform here. So uh, I don't remember the last time, Steve, that you got up on stage and demonstrated performance Pentium versus PowerPC using Microsoft Word. So I think that we have a lot to contribute there. <laughs> so again, we're committed. Drop by the booth. Come by a Bruce and Shot News keynote at lunchtime. You'll see a lot deeper uh, look at both Illustrator and InDesign. And stay tuned for the rest of the year and on into next uh, next year. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. I hope every developer who makes any one of those 1,500 applications argues over who is the poster child for Mac OS 10. I think we all win if that's the process. Well, a couple other developers that may want to make that same argument. Um, are now, we're going to move from the 2D space into some of the 3D space because you know the Mac has been the best platform for working with photography, working for line art, for working with layouts, um, but with the power of Mac OS X and Unix under the, under the hood, we have the ability to also deliver great creative tools to all professionals out there using 3D as well as 2D tools. And that's what our last two examples will be. The first one is from New Tech. They've delivered some great products on Mac OS X. I'd like to bring up Brad Peebler, who's the executive VP of 3D Graphics at New Tech. Brad? Ah, shucks. Thanks. 
All right, I'm here to talk to you today about LightWave 3D version 7. LightWave 3D has been on the Macintosh platform for about six years, and in that time it has become the most popular 3D graphics application on the Mac. We're very, very excited about OS X, and especially OS 10.1. And we're going to show you some things we've done inside of LightWave 3D to optimize it, not only for OS 10.1, but also for the AltaVec Velocity Engine and for multiple processors. Now, LightWave 3D is typically known for its use in television, film, gaming, web, but we're really now getting into print and digital illustration. So we're going to show you how we can cross those lines with one single data set. All right, the first thing we're going to do is take a look here at just a simple preview. And when you think of 3D, the mythical third dimension, you generally think of animation, and that's what we have here. What we're doing right now is we're taking advantage of two embedded Apple technologies. One is QuickTime, and the other is OpenGL, one of the open standards Phil was talking about. OpenGL gives us the ability to see 3D graphics in real time, and of course, QuickTime gives us the ability to play back 2D animations very rapidly. So what we've done is we've used OpenGL to calculate the preview, and we grab those OpenGL uh, frames, we slam those into the QuickTime media layer, and then we can play those back inside of our application at a guaranteed frame rate, in this case, 30 frames per second for NTSC. Now what we're going to do, though, is we're going to jump over here and take a look at how we might use this data set for print. So I'm going to go ahead and end the preview, and you can see we have the car now into a new environment. You'll notice the background is actually a photograph. One of the most tricky things about 3D is getting the final render to look photographic. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the photograph in the background as the lighting for the 3D element. Now typically you wouldn't come up on stage and do a render, especially a high uh, intensity radiosity re render, but the LightWave render engine is so optimized to take advantage of the velocity engine and multiple processors that that's exactly what we're going to do. What you're seeing right now are millions and millions, literally, of rays being fired off into the environment to calculate the shading on that automobile. And we're doing that with a, a tool called Global Illumination and Radiosity. And you'll notice the processor bars there.